Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week I want to show you a very useful effect to make your output signal comply with broadcast standards if you work on that field. I'm talking about the safe color effect that is nothing fancy but it can definitely save you behind in a lot of situations. And sorry for not uh, having a, an MC5 tutorial up but uh, I still, I'm still on, on MC4. So, um, you know, that's that's going to take a while, I guess. This is my sequence. It consists of only one shot. Uh, that looks very, very grainy because I've cranked up the contrast uh, a huge lot. And if we look at uh, the waveform, it's blown all out of proportions. And if we look at the, the RGB parade, you know... <laughs> This is way over any limit that you would want. Of course, this is an extreme example and it's generally best to, you know, change this within color correction because you have more control over how your uh, result is achieved. And it doesn't just clip your signal. But, you know, if you have a giant sequence and it's generally okay and you want to make sure that everything is uh, limited uh, to you know, broadcast standards and your tape is not rejected by quality control, then what you can use is the safe color effect. So go to tools, effect palette, image, and just drag and drop the safe color limiter on an empty track above your sequence. It will fill the whole sequence. And now you can go into Effect Editor. And what you can see right now is on the right is the result of what the safe color limiter does, as with any effect. And on the left, if you have highlight out of range colors selected in the source monitor analysis, you can see what color ranges are affected right now by the safe color effect. So you can exactly see where it, you know, changes your image. Now there are a couple of options here that we'll quickly go through, but to actually see what's happening a lot better, we'll go into color correction mode so that we can actually see what is happening in the waveform. Let's check out the Luma waveform first. You can see it's already clipped because the composite Luma levels option is already selected. If I deselect it, you can see the original waveform. And of course, the levels are, you know, way too high and way too low as well. As we're looking at the Luma waveform right now, let's check out the Luma options first. You can set the low threshold for the Luma and the high threshold for the Luma. Everything below that is clipped and everything above that is clipped as well. There are different scales available. Choose the one that you're most familiar with. Maybe if you're not in the US, IRE it may not, might not be your standard, but you might go for millivolts or if you're all digital, go 8-bit as well. Choose whichever, uh, you know, appeals to you most. You know, they all work the same way. It's just a different scale, right? Here the default option is very sensible. It goes from a 0 to a 100 IRE. And that, you know, you don't have to change. Now let's check out the YC waveform. Now that's the composite waveform where Loomer and Chromer are both visible. Now here our composite levels are interesting. Now the levels that are allowed here may differ from region to region. For example, where I am, the level also may not exceed a zero or a hundred. If you look closely now, you can see that there is a couple of pixels that actually go above your set limits. 
That is because the 422 save option is not on. If I check this box here, you can see there's a straight cutoff and no pixels go over and under your selected limits. It's a difference in how Media Composer actually analyzes the Chroma subsamples. So if you want to be really, really sure, you should check the 42 save option. But it takes a, a lot longer to render. So it's always a trade-off between speed and accuracy. So we'll leave the 42 option on. And go to the last option here, which is RGB levels. For that, we'll also, of course, check out the RGB waveform. There it is, our good old RGB parade. And while it looks good, generally, you can see that the blue levels actually are higher than 100%. And your hardware waveform monitor probably is flashing with uh, RGB error if that kind of thing happens. But this can be easily remedied. Put the low threshold to 16, the high threshold to 235. And now everything is nice and tidy <laughs> and reduced to the standard signal levels. That is all there is to it. We are, we're actually done. Our signal is nice and clean now. Again, we can check out uh, the effect editor here and see what kinds of color ranges are affected. Quite a lot of them, as you can see in the source monitor. We can also look at the composer window with and without the effect and see the difference. So the safe color effect is a really, really nice effect. It's very easy to configure. And, uh, you know, it's a nice safe option. Now we'd actually have to render this, of course, because it will probably not play in real time. As you can see there, we are not having full frame playback here. Nice red bar there. <laughs> so you'd actually have to render this one and, you know, can go <laughs> get a cup of coffee if you have a long sequence or two or seven. <laughs> So this was a very short episode, and you know why? Because there's a World Cup, <laughs> you know, I don't have time for a long episode. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. And if you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on the site avidscreencast.com, where you can also watch past episodes, and you can also subscribe on iTunes, of course. Uh, here, nice uh, Safari 5 with uh, a very nice HTML5 video implementation, by the way. So you, ch ch you should definitely check it out. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions like future show topics, especially short ones, <laughs> within the next couple of weeks anyway, uh, drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash screencast. And if you'd like to know what kinds of things I do professionally, check out my website, editguy.de, where I've put uh, two new videos up. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.